Good evening. You're watching News Mongolia and Beyond. I'm your host, Tandor Kambatar. And for top stories, the Prime Minister of Mongolia is currently in Kyrgyzstan for an official visit. The new Karkaroon project includes a residential area for a population of 500,000. A 75 secondary schools of 13 schools will receive a cabinet. And for the news, stay tuned. The Prime Minister of Mongolia, Ayrton Lovsnamsara, met the Chairman of the Cabinet of Ministers of Kyrgyzstan, Akilbek Japarov, while being on a working visit to the Kyrgyz Republic. He is also participating as an observer in the 22nd meeting of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, Member States Council of Heads of Government, which commenced yesterday in Bishkek. In light of this, the Prime Minister of Mongolia held specific talks with the head of the government of the Russian Federation. A few days prior, during the Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation in China, the President of Mongolia, Hulsuk, met with Russian President Vladimir Putin to discuss the reduction and elimination of tariffs on agriculture products exported from Mongolia to the Russian Federation. Building on these discussions, the heads of government from both sides convened in Bishkek. We are meeting today following the meeting between the presidents of Mongolia and Russia at the Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation in Beijing. Additionally, the Intergovernment Commission meeting in Mongolia's capital Ulaanbaatar was also successful. This meeting holds great significance given this recent event, and we also had a phone conversation to commemorate the 100th anniversary of diplomatic relations between our two countries. In an exciting new venture, the new Karkaroon project is set to create a residential area for a population of about 500,000. Next year, a budget of 13 billion MNT has been allocated towards research, feasibility studies and the initial budgeting of the construction of the new Karkaroon city. Heading the national committee responsible for the city's construction is Tawasuru, the Minister of Construction and Urban Development, with Natsuk Dorch, the former chief architect of Lambat City, leading the administration responsible for New Karkum City under the National Committee. New Karkum City will encompass 189 hectares of land spanning both Urhanga and Ahranga provinces, aiming to accommodate approximately 500,000 residents. A key feature of the city is the commitment of two green spaces, pedestrian-friendly sidewalks, extensive bicycle lanes, and an impressive 70% reliance on public transportation. Moreover, the entire city is designated as area ready for building. Research has validated the city's potential by affirming by the availability of good drinking water and favorable climate conditions. Consequently, construction of the commemorative bronze structure at the city's center is set to commence next year. Last August, the Citizens' Representative Meeting of Orhanga Province supported the transfer of land from its province towards the state for special needs. Presently, the Assembly of Orhanga Province is convening to discuss the significant land transfer. The vision for New Karkaroon City extends far beyond conventional urban planning. It aspires to be the heart of Mongolia's government, administration, culture, tourism, health services, international relations and high-tech industry. I listened to the presentation of the infrastructure needed to build the city. The Ministry of Electronic Development and Communications has expressed that it can solve the infrastructure of the electronic network. Also, because it used to be the ancient capital, it was planned to develop tourism based on the old Harkorn. Experienced foreign experts will be brought in and employed. We will endeavor not to make the same mistakes when planning new cities. The Ministry of Construction and Urban Development is, in conjunction with the new Karkum City Development Administration, recently organized the first meeting to unveil and discuss the planning concept for new Karkum City. This initiative follows the December 2022 decree issued by the President of Mongolia, Khursukhna, which aims to reconstruct Karkum in the Orkham Valley. The objectives include creating a healthy and safe environment for citizens, population redistribution, regional development, and the preservation of Mongolia's valuable heritage. As part of this decree, the Parliament and the Government of Mongolia have issued relevant resolutions and decisions leading to the establishment of the administration responsible for the development of New Karkum City in March 2023. The planning for New Karkum City is aligned with Mongolia's government, administration, culture, tourism, health services, and the vision of being a hub for international relations and high-tech production. 
The city of Khartoum is spending over Hanga and Ahanga provinces and accommodating around 500,000 residents will incorporate a striking emphasis on green, pedestrian-friendly areas, cycling infrastructure and the substantial reliance on public transportation. Furthermore, the concept envisions an economically independent, modern smart city with advanced infrastructure for surface water and grey water reuse, waste recycling and the utilization of various forms of renewable energy. A notable international collaboration took place at the conference attended by architects, experts and academics from Mongolia, the Russian Federation, the Republic of Kazakhstan, Japan and Israel. They came together to exchange ideas on the planning concept for Karkrum City and to explore the development trends of global cities. The administration overseeing the development of new Karkrum City is diligently working to conduct a comprehensive engineering geological and hydrogeological survey and topographical mapping of the city within the current year. This initiative signifies a remarkable step forward for Mongolia and holds the promise of becoming a model for modern, sustainable and technologically advanced urban development. The ECHO cabinets to be created at regional secondary schools by the grant aid agreement between the governments of the Federal Republic of Germany and Mongolia through the KFW Bank of Germany and as part of the project protecting the biodiversity conservation and climate change adaptation. Over the past period, the 11.5 million euro fund was allocated to 48 secondary schools of Mongolia for creating ECHO cabinets. The second and third stages of the projects will be implemented using 27.5 million euros allocated for 75 secondary schools in 13 schools of the western and Gobi regions that are located in 18 special protected zones. We are conducting comprehensive work aimed at not just to create eco cabinets furnished with all necessary tools and equipment, but also to make regular use of those cabinets in the future. Looking back at the outcomes of the implemented stages of the project, the number of students interested in the natural sciences and those who have obtained scholarships have grown immensely. As a result, students are now able to disseminate the necessary information to their relatives and friends. Students have learned how to use scientific research and data. This project carries an important role of promoting nature conservation and environment protection among the younger generation. In addition, the project promotes sustainable development goals implementation among the public. Thank you for staying with us. Now let's take a look at the currency exchange rates provided by Mongol Bank. Here's the international news from our partner agencies. China's top diplomat, Foreign Minister Wang Yi, has expressed the belief that dialogue between Beijing and Washington should not only resume but also deepen. This statement raises optimism about the potential for stabilizing the relationship between the world's two largest economies, particularly in the midst of significant conflicts in the Middle East and Europe. Throughout the three days of meetings, senior officials from the Biden administration, including potentially the president himself, will emphasize the importance of China taking on a more proactive role on the global stage if it wishes to be recognized as a responsible major international actor. Good evening. I'm very pleased to welcome Foreign Minister Wang Yi to the United States. I very much look forward to constructive conversations over the next two days. Wang Yi made these remarks at the outset of his three-day visit to Washington, where he is engaging with high-level U.S. officials, including the possibility of meeting President Joe Biden. During my visit at Secretary Blinken's invitation, it's clear that China and the U.S. have differences, but also vital shared interests and challenges. Dialogue is crucial. It should not only resume, but be deep and comprehensive. This will enhance understanding, reduce misunderstandings, and expand common ground for mutual benefit. This approach will stabilize China-U.S. relations for sustained growth. In disagreements, China remains composed, valuing adherence to international norms of mere strength. We trust that facts and history will provide a fair verdict, and I thank Secretary Blinken for the opportunity. Our discussions will be constructive and forward-looking. 
Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Biden's National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan are anticipated to urge China to contribute constructively to efforts addressing both Israel, Hamas, and Russia-Ukraine conflicts. These discussions could pave the way for a summit between President Joe Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping next month on the sidelines of an Asia-Pacific economic cooperation leaders gathering in San Francisco. The United Nations has issued a report indicating that diminishing fuel resources have compelled IONWRA, the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, to scale back the operations in Gaza. Additionally, there are growing concerns about overcrowding in the agency's emergency shelters. According to Stefan Dujaric, the spokesperson for the United Nations Secretary General, the number of internally displaced individuals seeking refuge in Gaza's shelters now exceeds the designated capacity by a factor of 2.7. Uh, fuel, which is desperately needed to run backup generators, remains banned by uh, is still unable to get uh, into um, into Gaza. As a result, uh, the UN Relief and Works Agency, UNRWA, has almost exhausted its fuel reserves and began significantly reducing its operations. Over the course of four consecutive days, from Saturday to Tuesday, 62 trucks carrying essential supplies such as water, food and medical provisions have made their way from Egypt into Gaza. However, Dujarek noted with concern that fuel remains unable to reach Gaza. An estimated 1.4 million people in Gaza are internally displaced, with some 629,000 sheltering 150 UNRWA designated emergency shelters. Overcrowding is a growing concern as the average number of internally displaced people per shelter has now reached 2.7 times the designated capacity of each shelter. Consequently, UNWRI finds itself on the verge of depleting its fuel reserves and has initiated significant reductions in its operations as per the spokesperson's update. Water supplies through the network in areas south of Wadi Gaza has temporarily improved. This happened after UNRWA and UNICEF managed to deliver small quantities of fuel they had retrieved from their existing reserves to key facilities. However, the available uh, fuel in these facilities will be exhausted uh, f fairly uh, soon, and the supply of piped water is expected to cease again. Dujarek also mentioned a temporary improvement in water supplies for regions located south of Wadi Gaza. Nevertheless, he cautioned that this improvement is anticipated to be short-lived due to the ongoing fuel supply limitations. Here's the weather forecast of world major cities. That's all for today. Thank you for staying with us. We'll see you next week with more news and updates. Have a nice weekend. Goodbye.